Hello everyone, I'm Christine Gritman, and this is Let's Talk About Brand. I do this show every single Friday at 12 noon Eastern time, though let me know what time it is where you are watching. There are two things that are a little bit different about today's show. One of them is I have gotten rid of the red. I know, moment of silence. That's enough of a moment. And the other thing is, I will admit, today's show is actually pre-recorded. I've done this just a couple times before, and uh, it, it's always because there's a guest who I really, really want to bring to you guys. So that's the way the scheduling works out. So this today's guest was literally the first person I put on my list of people who I wanted to have on when I conceived this show, Let's Talk About Brand. And that's because when I think of personal branding, this is who I think of. The, that person is Chris Ducker. Uh, his book, Rise of the Youpreneur, is um, a must read if you are interested in building your personal brand or if you're interested in personal branding in general. He has his Youpreneur program. He has a Youpreneur Summit in normal times. Uh, so he is all about the Youpreneur. And we're going to talk about what that means, how he came to it, and how you can embrace it. So without any further ado, Let's bring on Chris Ducker. Yay! Hey, Chris. Hello. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, so we actually on my on my chat chat about brands this past Tuesday, we talked about uh, being a youpreneur and what it means. But the interesting thing is several people hadn't heard the term and didn't quite fully understand it. So I guess, you know, the obvious place to start is, can you tell us about how you came to the, to the concept of the youpreneur? I think it was a gradual thing. I don't think it's, it was something that, um, sort of, I, I sat down and planned per se. Uh, it was something that had been with me for a while uh, in terms of the focus that we were having on my own personal brand and kind of working with other, particularly online business owners uh, in building their personal brands. And so, um, yeah, slowly but surely, it just sort of developed over the period of about three or four years or so. And it was in 2000 and uh, I think in 2014, I was in the United States with a good buddies of mine, friend, uh, Pat Flynn's house. And uh, we would, we just finished a water balloon fight outside with the kids. And uh, <laughs> we're in the process of having a cup of coffee uh, in his office. And that was where, without going through the entire story, uh, that, that was where the word youpreneur was first uttered. And so um, instantly looked to snap up the domain name, which had already been registered. And Ooh. somebody was sitting on that domain name and it That's took me about a year worst. when you no, have no, it's a the worst idea but, and you're like you're not using it though yeah but then again you know there are many many times where i've had good ideas um usually in the shower where i've yeah. left the shower mid rinse to register <laughs> domain names yes. and um and i've never done anything with them so i wasn't ultimately that worried about it um and i knew that if if the guy the guy who owned it actually did nothing with with it at all there was no website there was no social handles uh registered at all so i snapped all of those up that afternoon um and uh it was the only thing that was really outstanding and i ended up actually getting uh in contact with the guy via linkedin of all places and ended up buying it from him uh directly with no broker or anything like that involved so it all worked out in the end. Um, and then I kind of just sat on it for about a year and, and <laughs> planned a few planned a few bits and pieces you in terms of what too. we were gonna do. <laughs> yeah. It just it was one of those things like I realized that we only had one shot to launch uh, yeah. with with it, with the brand. And I wanted to kind of get the I wanted to get the wording down properly. I wanted to get the meaning of Youpreneur down properly and what it meant, um, and how people could identify um with it and so yeah it took us about maybe just under a year uh, before we opened up the doors to youpreneur which was initially a membership community and now has you know expanded into so much more so yeah that was kind of that that was the uh, the catalyst of it all right there i'm very intrigued by some of those other shower brainstorms <laughs> that you had to get out and register do you remember any of them oh, man 
So many, gosh, no. I, I mean, I think I had, what did I have? Um, okay, you know what? Off the top of my head, I can't think of them now, but I, I know that I know that there's probably, there's, there's at least probably 15 domain names that I have registered post shower. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not exaggerating, exaggerating. So yeah, it, it, there's been a lot. And so, some of them have probably turned in certain things. Like also I like to protect our brand, our marks, uh, you know, we, we've trademarked, obviously, you pretty much all around the world, uh, bar a couple of tiny little territories that wouldn't really mean a whole lot to us. Um, and yes, we've gone after people just so you know, who have infringed that trademark as well and won. Um, and so, you know, it, it, I like to protect everything I do from a branding perspective. I think that's super important. So even the names for our opt-in magnets, for example, where it'd be eBooks or courses or anything that we've used from a marketing standpoint, we've also uh, register domain names for all of those as well. Nine times out of 10, they literally just get forwarded on to, um, you know, another URL that's either at chrisducker.com or youpreneur.com. But it's good to have those domain names in place so that when I'm an on, on a podcast like this, I can say, hey, go visit blah, blah, blah.com. Um, and the people listening or watching, they, they don't know that it's going to be forwarded, um, but it's just easier to remember for the person that you're trying to make a connection with. And that's, you know, the other kind of um, roll on effect of, of making sure you protect everything that you put out there as well. That brings me to a, an interesting question. Have you done the same? Um, what have you done in terms of, so I'm not phrasing this very well. So basically you preneur, of course, that's a brand. So that obviously, you know, you protect the trademarks and then the intellectual property, but it sounds like you yourself, the brand of you also, has some intellectual property there to be protected. So how how have you uh, done that and moved into that? The stuff that is not the Upreneur program in general, but the Chris Ducker stuff. Does that make sense? Well, I mean, anything, yeah, anything business related is trademarked, obviously, right? Business names, um, any marketing phrases, that sort of stuff. From ChrisDucker.com, I mean, like anything really like personal brand related, it's covered by copyright in the public domain as it is, right? Um, and so, you know, book titles, um, manuscripts of books, uh, you know, video blogs, all that sort of stuff is all covered by standard copyright laws. Um, and you know, nine times out of 10, if people do steal my content online and it has happened a lot, um, it probably doesn't happen as much today as it did maybe kind of four, five, six years ago, for some reason, I can't kind of put my finger on the reason why that's the case. Uh, maybe, maybe word got out that I'm, I'm a no, <laughs> no mess with kind of guy when it comes to that stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, at first, you know, you get entire blog articles completely lifted from your site yeah. and put onto somebody else's site or somebody's LinkedIn or, you know, something like that. I know and, some people uh, who actually have hired people to go um, and regularly kind of look into all of that stuff. They like to the point where they've yeah. had to hire somebody because it's been worth it to them to to kind of nail that stuff. Totally. And yeah, and you know, it, images as well. You know, like you know, anything, anything that's really anything that will give people um, a springboard uh, into you know building things faster for them. Um, I think that is, uh, you know, that that's always going to be a bit of an issue. There's always people out there that want to take kind of, you know, shortcuts and speed things up. Uh, what these idiots, quite frankly, <laughs> don't realize and appreciate uh, is that it takes uh, years to build a successful brand, personal brand, business, reputation, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you can't, you can't fast track that sort of stuff. You might be able to speed up certain elements, um, you know, such as social followings um, and uh, email list subscribers and things like that through paid ads. But then, you know, become, begins the question of like, you know, what's the quality of those leads once they're on your list? They, they, they clicked on an advert rather than following you organically and getting on your link, your list organically. So therefore, Obviously, you've got to ask the question like, how warm are they? How good are they as a generated lead? Um, but ultimately, I think that, you know, pe people who, who want to kind of just steal other people's work, 
um, and take it and use it for their own in some manner. Uh, they they don't last very long at all. Um, and I've you know I've I've used people who have done it to me and how they did it as examples in my talks and in my books. I've also used it uh, you know for other people that I've seen be ripped off as well. A good buddy of mine, Joel Com, wrote a book called Twitter Power. Somebody ripped off his his book and kind of put like a a fifty page PDF version of on um, Amazon Kindle. And, uh, you know, I, I, I ripped the shreds out of that in front of 1200 people in Vegas one year. So, you know, it, it, it's just that, that this is the kind of stuff that kind of irks me. Um, and I don't, I don't feel like it's ever going to stop, but for me personally, it has slowed down a little bit. And maybe it's because of all the cease and desist letters that I've had my attorney send to people around the world, but, um, sooner or later it happens to everybody. You just have to deal with it. It is what it is. It's just so crazy because the whole point is the value of you and the value of your personal brand. So someone trying to fake that, yeah, they're not going to last. Um, to that end, actually, I wanted to back up a little bit. So you are, this isn't all you do. Uh, Upreneur isn't your only uh, jam. You are a multiple entrepreneur. You own companies. You have owned companies. Um, I'd love to hear kind of how you, how your personal brand emerged um, as its own thing. Did you have a strong personal brand from the start? Did at some point in your entrepreneurial journey, you realize, oh, maybe I should put that out there? Because you, I mean, I'd love to hear actually a little bit about the companies that you have owned and, and um, you know, how the personal brand sort of emerged as its own thing. Yeah, sure. Well, look, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm just a big believer that ultimately your personal brand is what people say about you when you're not around. Right. Mm -hmm. So ultimately it's your reputation at the end of the day. Like when your name comes up in conversation at a dinner party or at a business conference or whatever it is, what comes out of people's mouths after your name is your reputation. Your reputation is your personal brand. It's basically what you're known for. Right. So the other businesses that I own and still operate are live to sell, uh, which is a call center facility in the Philippines that houses around 350 employees around the clock. Um, we also have Virtual Star Finder, which is our VA recruiting company. Um, and uh, then we have the Upreneur brand and anything kind of asso associated with my personal brand. There has been one big flop in the middle of all of that, which was called Your Web PA, which was kind of like taking job posting sites and putting it on steroids, utilizing our team. Um, and if I'm to be honest, the reason why that didn't work out is because I drank my own Kool-Aid. I thought because of the personal brand and the affiliations that I had with the other businesses that I owned, that that business would naturally be successful. After six months and about 50 to 60 grand down the drain, um, we pulled the plug on it because it was a complete and utter flop. People did not want to pay an extra 20, 25% above market average for things like getting podcasts transcribed and videos edited uh, just because Chris Ducker's name was attached to it. I'm curious um, yeah, about a dent, that. So, a dent so to the ego, yes. A dent to the bank account, yes. But nonetheless, a good lesson to be learned. I'd like um, to dig and, into uh, that yeah. a little bit more. So <laughs> so um, basically, how, about, about how long had you been sort of a, a known name at that point? About to. four years. Interesting. So, so you had a solid base there, and it didn't work. So, the personal brand well, can't sell literally anything. So, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the lessons you you learned there about what you could and could not do with the personal. brand. I think brand what it was was like that. that it 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 did work initially. We did get orders initially, and it was from the tried and true kind of super fans, right, that were kind of into everything that we were putting out. Um, but after three or four months after the initial launch, it became harder um, to get new business through the door. And I think it was a combination of, like I said, we were just too expensive, quite frankly. Um, and I think that we had relied too much um, on the personal brand side of our business model um, to be able to get the word out there, so to speak. And your reach is only so far. You can extend your reach, obviously, by getting onto other podcasts and 
men being mentioned in books and from the stage and all that kind of stuff. But ultimately, he reaches only so far. And bear in mind, this is 2014. 2014, right? So we didn't have Periscope. We didn't have live video. We had Twitter. We had, I think we just had, um, yeah, we had Instagram, uh, Facebook, obviously. So, you know, there was, I think, like, when I launched my first book, Virtual Freedom, in 2014, we used Google. Um, what was that even called? Google Live? No, I can't even remember what it was called now, right? So it just goes to show you how long. I, that's why I have no hair. I've been around too long. <laughs> it's that simple. But, yeah, diff different things, I guess, have different levels. It's so funny. There's a delay there. So I'm, like, seeing you talk but not hearing you. <laughs> anymore yeah i'm having the same issue at this end but we're pros it's and, so and strange if, the content is what matters and you're bringing it there you go it'll be fine and i mean i'm curious to know actually do the majority of your your subscribers watch the video or are they more listening to the show i believe they're watching the video um i hope so let us know in the comments also let us know lag. if you're watching on on facebook or on twitter actually yeah, it is a really bad lag. I don't know what's up. That's on that's yeah. on my end. I'm gonna call Verizon today. Um, but I would love to hear. So, so you've mentioned how, you know, it's not enough just to sell something with the personal brand and with the trust, because then you know that doesn't necessarily an allow you to build a new audience. It's just the people who already trust you. So, what are some of the keys to making sure that you do build something that works, kind of behind that personal brand, to back it up? Well, I think the key, you know, the really, really, really key thing here is to get super clear as early on in the journey that you're creating for yourself and the people that will enter your ecosystem on what you want to be known for. And I always, I always, always say to my coaching clients who potentially might struggle with this initially is that, you know, what you ultimately end up becoming known for is what people come to you for advice on on a regular basis. So open up your ears, open up your eyes, and see what people are coming to you on a regular basis for. What questions are they asking you over and over and over again? Um, you know, what are they asking for help on? What are they sharing in terms of struggles with you over and over again? That's what you become known for because clearly that's where your strengths lie. And, you know, this is why when I hear people say things like, oh, I'm going to lean into my weaknesses, I'm going to get better at the things I don't do very well, that, I, that just blows my mind. I don't understand why people would waste their time on that, quite frankly. Like, lean into the stuff that you do really, really good. That's your zone of genius. That's where you should be focusing in on. Whereas the stuff that you're no good at, you delegate that. You get rid of that. And so, um, yeah, that's the big one is to kind of just figure out what you want to be known for. If you can do that, everything else becomes so much easier because you know exactly who you're helping and how you're helping them. And that's, that, that's the, you know, the two biggies right there. And that's also the things people want to hear from you on. I mean, it, there is something refreshing about seeing someone admit they don't know everything. But that doesn't mean that they want to fo they'll follow you on that journey as a viewer. That doesn't mean that they'll follow your leadership on that journey. And that should be where your brand lies. I love it. Um, so we have a couple questions from this past Tuesday's chat about brand Twitter chat, which I do at noon on Tuesdays. Um, so Kathy Ann wants to know, so how did you get started as you preneur? We kind of dealt with a little bit, but what keeps you motivated to keep that going? Oh, it's my clients. You know, it's it's the clients that I work with, quite frankly. Um, when you are, when you're blessed to be in a position to have a certain amount of knowledge around a particular field or two, and people are willing to invest in downloading that experience from your memory bank into their memory bank to be able to springboard their own journey, uh, when they invest in working with you as a coach, as an, you know, an advisor, uh, the head of a mastermind, whatever you want to call it, that, that's incredibly inspiring. Um, and, and not only that, but when they take your advice and they put it into action and they get results from that, it becomes even more inspiring. It becomes almost awe inspiring to a certain degree. So what continues to motivate me is to be able to, you know, write, raise the bar in what we do uh, as a company, but also to raise the bar in the results that our clients get as well. Love it. 
All right, so we also have a question from Kelvin. He wants to know the biggest challenge you face as a youpreneur, specifically related to being a youpreneur, not just an entrepreneurial challenge in general. I think because of the fact that we're building a business based around our expertise and around our uniqueness, right, as, as individuals, I think the big thing is um, that a lot of people struggle with delegation and they, they struggle with ultimately getting help when it comes to the growth and the scaling of their businesses. Now, I'm lucky because I have people working for me and I have a good sized team. So I don't struggle with this myself personally all that much anymore, but I did many years ago before I burnt out and wised up to it. And this is something that I see a lot of people aren't, you know, sort of seeing, well, oh, I've got to do this and I've got to do a weekly show and I've got to do a podcast and I've got to go live and I've got to be, you know, um, accessible via social. I've got to create content on, you know, YouTube. I've got to write emails. I've got to create products. I've got to go live on stage. I've got to travel. I've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to, got to. And what they don't understand actually is that they're just heading for burnout, quite frankly. So the, you know, the, the kind of not really strategy per se, but the smart thing to do right here is just to focus on one particular thing at a time. And this is what I tell all of my coaching clients, like 90 days, we work in 90 day sprints inside of our Youpreneur Incubator, which is our coaching program. So every 90 days, we have a, a quarterly mastermind, which is an entire day that we take out of working in our businesses to focus on working on our businesses. And we have special guests. In the past, we've had people like Amy Porterfield and Lewis Howes and Joe Polizzi and a whole you know, a host of rock stars, right? And they come in and they share one big thing right there. Then I do coaching with them. I do goal setting with them. They hot seat with each other and they really dive in on what they're doing. But the big consistent factor of those days is that what's the next thing that you're going to do in the next 90 days? What's the thing you're going to be focusing in on? And they're only allowed to work on one big project every 90 days. I won't allow it. I won't allow them to work on any more because I tell you something right now, 81% of all of our client projects quarter to quarter throughout the course of 2020 were hit. 81% were hit. And I'm very, very proud of that because that is a big percentage of projects completed and classed as successful. And so you work on one thing at a time until completion, and then you work on something else. And the only time when that is not applicable is when you've got a, a decent sized team behind you where you can perhaps work on two different projects at the same time, parallel, so to speak. And you know, that really parallels what I um, kind of discovered and embraced last year, because before I was doing so much different content in different places. I had um, two weekly shows instead of just one. And I was kind of social media generalist last fall, only last fall, I kind of decided to really hone in on the, the personal branding thing and just to do my Tuesday Twitter chat and the companion Friday live stream. And people think I'm doing more. People have said to me, my God, you're doing so much more. I'm seeing you everywhere. I'm doing less. I'm just doing it stronger. And I think that that's really key. It's all it's all about about focus. Uh, our friends Andrew and Pete they talk about the ninety ten rule: spend ninety percent of your energy doing one thing remarkably well. And it's just such an important lesson, especially for a youpreneur. And you can expand once you can expand and delegate. Um, so I think that's such a key lesson. Thank you. Um, final question from the chat. Uh, and I know you've given a lot of thought to this. It's part of why we're, we're talking here on Thursday morning. Uh, Dave says, as a youpreneur, how do you go about balancing your schedule with family slash personal time? Because you are the brand and there is that pressure to be on all the time, but you have to avoid burnout, like you said. So tell us how you manage that. Yeah, well, the thing for me also is that it's not, you know, I'm, I'm running three different businesses and two of them are overseas and on a completely different time zone as well. So there has to be a balance, so to speak, of priorities. Uh, and that's why I've not worked at Friday for the last probably six, seven years or so. Um, Friday is, is, you know, the kids are at school during term time and, and Friday is actually Friday date. So I get to spend more time with my beautiful wife and um, I get to spend more time away from work and that bandwidth kind of free up 
uh, uh, session, so to speak, each Friday. Um, it works great because I also know that Monday through to Thursday, I've got to be hyper productive because I'm only working four days a week. Um, and I only work probably about six hours on each of those four days as well. So I've got a 24 hour work week. 24 hours is pretty much half what most people work, right? And so, you know, again, I'm lucky because I've got a great team that helps me do a lot of the stuff. Um, but the stuff that I'm doing, the things that I'm focusing in on, only I can do. And I think that's the big lesson here in terms of prioritization. Balance is that you need, if you, if you want to build a professional and profitable personal brand business, you've got to be in your zone of genius as much as physically possible, which means you've got to get other people to do the other stuff because the other stuff is also important too for growing a business. And so for me, I just want to make sure that I'm creating content, coaching my clients and researching, reading, learning, because leaders need to be able to continuously learn in order to be able to continuously lead. I'm a big believer of that. And so I double down on that pretty much every single day as well. You know, if Warren Buffett can run this huge multi-billion dollar company and still read six, seven hours a day, um, if I can't get in half an hour, 45 minutes every morning, there's something wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> that is that is something that I need to learn, <laughs> certainly. Uh, why is this not changing? Hmm. All right, so continuing our technical issues today. Um, but thank you so very much uh, for all of this, Chris. Um, you, of course, are the consummate youpreneur. I love, um, you actually are, I mentioned this in some of the promos, but you are responsible for my interest in personal branding in a big way because you are the first person I saw speak at my first social media marketing world back in 2017. And I was just ah, like, okay. I still have screenshots saved on my phone from your presentation. Um, so thank that's you. awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. Um, and tell tell everyone uh, where they can find you, where they should find you, um, all of that. Well, I wouldn't be much of a personal brand if I didn't have ChrisDucker.com. And <laughs> if I wasn't at Chris Ducker on all the socials. So there you go. That's where you want to go. Perfection. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for being on. This has been wonderful. Everyone should go check you out and they should go read your book. And again, I am Christine Gritman. I do this show every single Friday, 12 noon Eastern time. It is usually live. We'll be back live next week. I also have a companion Twitter chat on Tuesdays. So next Tuesday, we are going to be talking about building the business behind your brand. It is one thing for you to be like, hey, I'm out here, I'm a personal brand, but what do you do? What pays you? <laughs> so unless unless you're like an Instagram influencer or something. So we're gonna be talking about building the business behind your personal brand. And we're gonna be talking about that live on Friday with Kalika Yap, who has done a great job of that. She has several uh, businesses under her belt, all of which really do ultimately deal with different elements of branding. So definitely join us for that. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.